Okay, so if you see the octagon rafter calculator that we have here in front of us, if um, we scroll down slightly here, you can see that uh, we have length of walls here lo um, detailed as F. And uh, the reason it's in three different places is because the length of these walls is all going to be the same for an octagon. Actually, all eight of these will be exactly the same. So for this example, what we're going to do is we're, you would need to measure the length of the wall that you're using on your job site for an octagon and enter it up here as F. So for this example, we're just going to use five feet. Then we see common rafter overhang. We want to enter in how big of an overhang we're going to use. Our jack rafter spacing, we're going to do two foot on center for our rafter spacing. And then we have to enter the pitch. As you can see, we're going to use an 8 and 12 here. So then, as you can see, you don't need to enter too much. It's really, really simple. And you just hit submit. Then, when you scroll down, you can see here that, uh, actually, let's scroll this down so we can see it a little better here. We've got print iframe. So this goes into an iframe here, and you can actually hit this and print it out. And uh, it'll print out on your, your home printer or your office printer. You can take this paper to the job site so you've got all your measurements on there. But let's go through each one of these so that uh, we know what uh, they're used for. So face wall length, as we already know, is the length from here to here, and that's 5 feet. Then it gives us the total width of our octagon, 12 foot and 7 eighths. That's from this outside of wall to outside of wall on the square. Then it gives us the diameter of our octagon of 13 and 13 sixteenths. That would be the measurement from corner to corner because it actually makes things longer. So the diameter from all the way across, 13 foot, 13 sixteenths. Then it gives us the radius of the octagon of 6 foot 6 and 7 sixteenths. That's just half the difference or half the span here from the corner to the center hub of the octagon. Projection of bay window, 3 foot 6 and 7 sixteenths, is just showing you what this projects from this corner to the face here. Projection wall length, 5 foot, we've already gone over that. Wall angle, 45 degrees. So basically these walls coming together are going to be 45 degrees on an octagon because it has 8 sides. If you were to divide that in half, you'd get an angle of 22 and a half, and that's what you could cut your plates at so that they join together when you're framing your walls. An interior wall angle, 135 degrees is the interior angle of the walls if you used a protractor. Bay hip rafter run bisect angle, so 67 and a half degrees is that angle, and you're going to need that for your hip cheat cuts and also your jack rafter cheat cuts is going to be the, the bevel for that. And I'll show you a diagram for that in a minute. Common rafter run, 6 foot 7 16 So that is the run from the outside of the plate here to the center hub. And again, all these dimensions, you need to remember, are without any setbacks. It's not determining whether you're using an inch and a half thickness rafters or if your hips are four by. It's got no setbacks, so it brings you right to the very center line of, uh, of every one of these measurements. So depending on how, what components are in your roof, you're just going to have to uh, make these setbacks, which is really easy to do. Um, but, you know, so that this works for any roof that you have all of our dimensions are to the center. So then we see that uh, we have a rafter pitch of 8 and 12, rafter pitch angle of 33.69, that's the standard degree for an 8 and 12 plumb cut. Then we have common rafter rise, 4 foot and 5 sixteenths. That is the rise of the roof, but again you need to remember this does not take into account your heel height of your rafter or your hap height, which is your height above plate. This just gives you the actual rise. So if you want to know the overall height of your roof to the top, you're going to need to factor in your heel height or your hap height. Then common rafter length. We have 7 foot 3 and 1 16th. This is actually the diagonal or length of your rafter, again, without minusing out for setbacks, from the center hub to your heel height on the, on the diagonal of the rafter. Then we see rafter overhang run, 2 foot. We already entered that in. And uh, then it gives us an overhang rafter length of 2 foot 4 and 7 eighths. That's actually giving us the length on the diagonal of what our tail length is going to be for our rafters. Okay, so then we have our jack rafter difference in length of 5 foot 9 and 11 sixteenths. That's actually going to be the deduction of our jack rafters. 
So we can factor in that we have our common rafter length here, and if we minus 5 foot 9 and 11 sixteenths from that length, that'll give us our first jack rafter. And again, that's without minusing out for deductions for the thickness of the hip. Bay hip rafter angle, so 31.63 is going to be the plumb cut angle of our hip rafters. Bay hip rafter bevel angle, 22 and a half. Bay hip rafter run, so now this is going to give us the length from this point here to the center hub again of our hip rafters. And then we see bay hip rafter length of 7 foot 8 and 1 8. That is the diagonal length of our, raft, or of our hip rafters from this point outside of wall to again the center hub without any deductions or setbacks for rafters thicknesses. Bay hip rafter overhang run. So we know that on the horizontal it's two feet because that's what we entered in. So we see from this point here to here it's two foot two. Bay hip rafter overhang rafter length, two foot six and nine sixteenths. So on the diagonal, from this point to this point, it's two foot six and nine sixteenths. So on the on the on the diagonal or or the tail length is that dimension. Bay hip plan angle, again, 67 and a half degrees. It's going to be the degrees here. Now let's take a look. There we go. So when we look at this, we see that this is a standard octagon diagram for our rafter connections if all of our components are an inch and a half thick, two by material. So you can see here these four rafters are our first four common rafters. And again, you can see that usually I will take my, I will deduct an inch and a half off of the rafter run for these or for the span and then divide it in half so you're minusing off three quarters and enter that in as your run so you get your actual rafter dimension to this point right here and then all of these are the same length usually I will add an inch and a half to one of the rafters so that it just makes it come together nicely it's however you want to do it but then you can see that the next four common rafters are just a double 45 degree cheat cut just like a standard hip but these are still your common rafters and they're the same length with the exception that they have a deduction from here to here because again the rafter lengths that we give you in the iframe go to the center point here so you always have to make your deduction then you can see these rafters here are all of our hip rafters and again you have to make a larger deduction to get to the point here but then you have a double cheat cut for every one of your hip rafters and that angle is going to be the 67 and a half degree angle so this is how your uh, octagon roof should come together so then if you notice here freeze block angle or square cut fascia angle is going to be 12.94 that's going to be the miter angle for your fascia or freeze block the bevel angle for your fascia or freeze block is going to be 18 and a half degrees and uh, then your bay hip rafter backing angle. If you're going to do a bevel cut on the top of the hip, especially if you're using 4 by or 6 by, that angle is going to be 12 and a quarter degrees. And if you're using 2 by material, because this was based off 2 by, and you want to drop the hip, you just want to know, well, the drop is a quarter inch. So you can see how much this gives you and uh, how simple it is to enter it in. And also another thing that I like to do is if I'm using this, there's a lot of stuff on here that you don't necessarily need, so I go through and I highlight my main components for my roof just so it makes it a little bit easier when I get out to the job that uh, only the stuff I really need, but it has everything here for your own benefit. So, hope you enjoy.